So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the first speaker. Um, I, I often call him the secret weapon of the Yes campaign. He doesn't know that, but, but, but he is. And um, he's, he's often been criti critical of people going into the bun fight. So there's not going to be any bun fights tonight. We're going to have a, a, a nice debate and answer all your questions. And apparently I've heard as well that he's willing to answer questions at the end of the meeting on Doctor Who. Somebody told me that today. He knows all the answers to Doctor Who. So if you, can, if you can't stump him on that, you, you may stump him on that. So if you could please give a nice East Ayrshire welcome to our first speaker tonight, please. Patrick Harvey. I'm very grateful for the introduction, but I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint any fellow sci-fi fans in here that uh, when it comes to Doctor Who trivia, I'm afraid my least favourite Labour MP, Tom Harris, is a far greater expert than I am, so I'm going to have to defer to his judgement on that one, uh, not on any other subject, uh, but only on that. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to come and speak and just to say that some of the public meetings that I've been to around Scotland and I've tried to get around the country as much as I can over the, the last few months and over the next few months to come there'll be a lot more of it. The public meetings that I've taken part in during this referendum have been really exciting, often really inspiring ideas and it's I think reflective of Something that's happening in Scotland in the last year or two, as we get closer and closer to making this decision, a decision on a question which has been a bit of a dividing line in Scottish politics for a long, long time, but an issue that for many people has been a wee bit abstract, I think. The question, do you support the idea of Scottish independence in theory, some point in the far off, dim and distant future? That's the way a lot of people have seen it. But the closer we get to polling day, and the closer the polls start to look, and they are starting to look close, the more this is becoming a real question. Not do you support the, the general idea in the abstract, but actually, right now, are we going to do this? Are we actually going to make this decision for real and turn Scotland into an independent country? It becomes a fundamentally different question. It's forcing people to ask not just where should power be exercised, London or Edinburgh, or actually right throughout our country, in all communities up and down the country. Not just where should power be exercised, but actually what kind of country do we want to be? And it's been decades since most of the political spectrum has been offering people anything more than variations on a theme. The chance for this generation to ask and answer a defining question, what kind of country do we want to be? What kind of economy do we want to run? And in whose interests? What kind of future are we going to hand on to the next generation? That's a rare opportunity and it's been stimulating such creativity in Scotland. Not just among campaigners on both sides. Also among organisations that have sprung up like National Collective, think tanks like the Reed Foundation, neutral organisations, some of the international development organisations who are not campaigning for a yes or a no, but want to ask what can Scotland contribute to international development. Poverty organisations who are not campaigning for a yes or a no, but who are saying what can Scotland do to close the gap between rich and poor and start turning around the decades long drift toward this neoliberal, rightward-leaning politics that Britain doesn't seem able to change, but Scotland could. This has been one of the most creative periods in Scottish politics, and it's such a far cry from, do you remember this phrase, Scotland on pause? We were told when this debate began, when it became clear there was going to be a referendum, that Scotland was on pause, Scotland was on hold. Well, maybe sometimes the Scottish Parliament doesn't rise above the he said, she said kind of sterile posturing. But Scotland, the national debate that's moved outside of Hollywood and is taking place in rooms like this, in pubs, in living rooms, in schools, in universities, in workplaces right up and down the country, the national debate that our country is engaging in is so far from Scotland on pause, it's unbelievable. It's a creative period of new ideas bubbling over 
I think Scotland is seeing such a creative period that actually, can you imagine what we would do if we turned around on September the 19th and said, look at all these fantastic ideas we've got, and yet we've not taken the opportunity to put them into practice. If Scotland votes yes, I won't be waving flags. I don't really care much for a flag, saltire or a union flag. I won't be singing patriotic songs. I'm not really one for patriotism in either national identity, British or Scottish. I'm not doing this out of national identity. And I'm not a nationalist. I don't think you have to be a nationalist to be driven towards a desire to change your society for the better. It's that opportunity for change that I think Scotland needs to grasp. Most of the public meetings by this point tend to be attracting a majority of yes voters. And this one might be the same. In many ways, I want to offer a compelling vision to people who are undecided. But it's equally important to offer something to people who are already committed to voting yes. Because you are the people who are going to have to go out over the next few months on the doorsteps and reach out to people who are yet to decide. And the most important message that I want you to take away tonight, if you're already committed to voting yes, to working for a yes vote, I want you to think about the kind of people who are not yet convinced. They've not been convinced by anything they've heard yet on either side. And they're the most important people in this debate. They're the people who can swing it one way or the other. Please let's not allow them to think that this is simply about rejection of anything. It's not for me, I mean, I, I've got a great deal that I dislike about the Westminster political landscape, a political set of institutions that couldn't get rid of an unelected house in Parliament after a hundred years of trying. There's a great deal to dislike about the UK political landscape. But frankly, the Scottish political landscape isn't perfect. The Scottish Parliament is not a perfect embodiment of an inclusive, participative democracy that I think Scotland deserves. This is not about rejection. It's not about blaming anyone. It's not about blaming a political party we don't like. It's not about blaming Westminster as a culture or the rest of the UK in terms of its population or their attitudes. No, this has to be positively about taking the opportunity and taking responsibility for ourselves. I don't think we can culturally take responsibility for making our lives better, for making our society better, for making our economy better and fairer, if we hook that onto blaming other people. So let's make sure that the next few months, this debate is one that's characterized by taking responsibility for ourselves. I think Scotland is ready to do that. I think we've had far too long, we all know that we've had far too long of blaming other people, of pretending that it's Westminster's fault, or it's London's fault, or it's the government's fault, or even that it's big business's fault. There is fault, but part of the fault is our own sense of responsibility. This debate has to be one about choosing to take responsibility ourselves. And I think that message, not one of blame, but one of positively choosing to take responsibility is the one that will resonate with people, the one that will make sense to people, the one that will appeal to those who are yet undecided. We've got the chance not just to start closing the gap between rich and poor, to start bringing democratic accountability back into our economy where it's been handed away to the markets and to the business world by government after government after government. Not just building a nation of peace that represents the values of global justice and sustainability. I think we've actually got the ability, the opportunity, to build a democratic culture where every community has got the sense of agency, the sense of power, the sense that they are taking decisions about their own lives, not blaming somebody else and resenting somebody else at whatever level of government they're getting things wrong. So let's go out there over the next four months and inspire people with the opportunity to think not just about whose fault it is that we're not perfect yet, but with the sense of responsibility by taking this step into an independent Scotland. Because let's just imagine the thrilling, 
I think, frightening moment that we'll have if we actually wake up on the 19th and think, bloody hell, we actually did it. We debated it for so long. We debated it for so long, but now it's real. People on both sides of this debate, even those who voted no, even those who right now are undecided and might still vote no, if we've won our independence, that thrilling and frightening, and it should be both, it should be both exciting and frightening, that moment when we all have to come together and make it work. That's the opportunity to bring the country together in that sense of excitement and, and thrill that will come from realising it's down to us now. From that moment on, we don't get the chance to blame other people. We have to make it work. We have to come together in a sense of responsibility and creativity. And then we'll have the chance to put all of these ideas that have been bubbling through Scottish public life in this national debate that we've been having, we'll have the chance to put those ideas into practice. So I look forward with you to being thrilled, excited, and a wee bit frightened on September the 19th. Thank you all for being here, and I look forward to your questions.